order to compare the bond polarity for various bonds, we need to start by calculating the electronegativity difference between all the atoms in those bonds. And we start by writing down the electronegativity for each atom in that bond. So hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, oxygen with 3.5, calcium 1, fluorine 4, beryllium 1.5, sulfur 2.5, lithium 1 and bromine 2.8. Once we have those electronegativities, we can calculate the difference in electronegativity for each of those bonds, where we see the bond between hydrogen and oxygen has a difference of 1.4. Calcium and fluorine has a net difference of 3. Beryllium and sulfur has a net difference of 1. And lithium and bromine has a difference of 1.8. We can then start to write down in order of increasing bond polarity because the bond between beryllium and sulfur has the lowest electronegativity difference and is therefore the least polar, followed by the bond between hydrogen and oxygen, followed by the bond between lithium and bromine, and finally, the most polar bond then is the bond between calcium and fluorine. This being a one mark question would be marked either correct or incorrect, but very simply, if you have calculated the electronegativity differences correctly and arranged in increasing order, it would be marked correctly. The next question we're asked to draw the Lewis dot structure and name the molecular shape for each of the following. And we do that by starting with the central atom, in this case it is boron. Boron has three valence electrons. We space those as far apart as possible. And it forms three bonds with nearby fluorines. And we need to remember that fluorine has seven valence electrons and we need to draw those three additional lone pairs around each separate fluorine atom in order to correctly draw the Lewis dot structure for boron fluoride. And then as we can see here, we have a central atom that has form three bonding electron pairs and no lone pairs, which means that the shape is trigonal planar. You can see that it is one dimensional or two dimensional and therefore trigonal planar. The next one is hydrogen sulfide, where we start once again with sulfur as our central atom with six valence electrons. We show then that it forms two single bonds with hydrogen ions. And we can then see that the shape that is formed here is an angular or bent shape. What's important to show in drawing this Lewis dot structure is to show the two lone pairs of sulfur that as a result push the hydrogen bonds downward and change that bond angle to be 109.5 degrees in the molecular shape of angular. Then we have a carbon dioxide molecule here we know that carbon has four valence electrons, and since it bonds to two oxygens, the only way that that is possible is if it forms a double bond with each oxygen atom. And so we show that it forms the linear shape here, and important to show that those double bonding electron pairs bond in exactly that order and in a straight line to make the linear shape. And then CH4 methane, we know that carbon once again has four valence electrons and it forms single bonds with each of the four hydrogens that are nearby. We draw it like this in two dimensions where we know in three dimensions the shape is actually tetrahedral. When marking questions like this, most common errors are leaving out the bonding electron pairs or the lone electron pairs on nearby atoms. It's important to include all of those and the names must be exactly as given here to get those marks and we try as far as possible to draw the three-dimensional shape even in two dimensions as shown. Next question asks us to explain why HCl has a higher boiling point than HBr and there are a number of steps to follow in any question of this nature. The starting point is always to compare the bond polarity and what we would say here is that the bond polarity in HCl is the electronegativity difference between hydrogen and chlorine and so we say that electronegativity difference is 
where in hydrogen bromide, the electronegativity difference is slightly smaller, 0.7. With this as our starting point, we can now say, therefore, HCl is the more polar molecule. HCl is our more polar molecule. Once we've accepted that HCl is our more polar molecule, that then allows us to say, therefore, it is going to have stronger intermolecular forces. We know that the stronger the, or the bigger the dipole, the stronger the intermolecular forces. And then what we need to say is we need to say those stronger intermolecular forces require more energy to break. We need to relate the intermolecular force strength to energy because we've been asked to compare these in terms of boiling point and we say since it requires more energy to break it therefore has a higher boiling point when marking this there are always a number of steps that are looked for the first is the comparison of the polarity of the molecules and that goes with electronegativity and then being able to say which is the more polar molecule the next step is to compare the strength of those intermolecular forces with energy. So we've said that the HCl has stronger intermolecular forces and therefore requires more energy to break. And the final step then saying, since it requires more energy to break, it would have a higher boiling point. A similar question given here, which substance has the higher boiling point between H2O and CF4? Explain your answer fully. And now we have not diatomic molecules anymore, but now we have slightly more complex molecules. So we would once again start out by looking at our bond polarity. The bond polarity between hydrogen and oxygen is or has a significant electronegativity difference, that electronegativity difference being 1.4. And so we say that this forms polar bonds. In much the same way, we say that the bond polarity between carbon and fluorine is also very significant and therefore the bonds are polar. Now where, this, where these two differ is that in our next step we need to mention the shape of each molecule and as we can see CF4 forms a tetrahedral shape, a tetrahedral shape and we know that the tetrahedral shape is symmetrical. Whereas on the other hand, our water molecule forms an angular or a bent shape, which is very clearly asymmetrical. The reason why this is important is because when you have a symmetrical molecule, it is automatically nonpolar. That is always going to be true. And we say that the symmetry negates the polarity of the bonds, where our asymmetrical molecule is polar. What this allows us to say is it allows us now to say that we have hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces that exist between the water molecules, whereas in our carbon tetrafluoride, because they are nonpolar molecules, we only have London intermolecular forces. And then we would say, since these hydrogen bonding forces are considerably stronger than the London intermolecular forces. More energy is required to break the London, excuse me, the hydrogen bonding in intermolecular forces, and therefore H2O has a higher boiling point. So it is quite a long answer, but it is the only way to ensure that all of the five marks are gathered because there is always going to be one mark for comparing the polarity of the bonds with the electronegativity difference. There's going to be one mark for comparing the symmetry of the molecules by referring to the shape of each molecule, because that then allows us to compare the types of intermolecular forces, because we know polar molecules, specifically those with bonds between hydrogen and oxygen, have hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces, and those are then compared to London forces. Our fourth mark here is then for saying, since hydrogen bonding forces are so much stronger than London forces, more energy is required. And again, the energy relationship is important here because then that allows us to finally say which one would have a higher boiling point in this case or relate 
the intermolecular forces to the physical properties 